Welcome back to Flat Irons Tuning. We're here in the shop. Unfortunately, not on the greatest of, of occasions. Uh, one of the guys here, Spencer, uh, his SDI is in the background here. Well, he had a bearing failure. And this is the engine. We, we pulled it out of the car. Um, and we want to go through this engine. And there's some interesting things about this um, that we want to kind of dig into, try and find some answers. Um, and, and bring it back to you. So Spencer, unfortunately, had a bearing failure about 33,000 miles ago. That was the original engine in his STI. And he went through it, put in, uh, rebuilt the engine with uh, mainly rods, CP pistons, had some machine work done, and, and basically put it back together as you see it here. Um, and now here, 33,000 miles later, well, he's had another bearing failure, unfortunately. Now, the, the really interesting detail here is that when he had the, his first issue, as he was putting everything back together, he picked a lot of the parts that are, that are exactly what you would assume would fix and prevent this issue from happening again. You know, um, IEG, uh, AOS, Killaby oil pickup, Killaby oil pan, and you know, for a long time the engine worked well, and then kind of out of the blue, here we are again with another bearing failure. And so that really is interesting, and so that's where we want to you know, take this engine apart, document the teardown, see what we can find, see if we can find any kind of information, some answers as to why this bearing failure, fa failure occurred. Because obviously, Spencer's putting the engine back together again, and once again, you know, he wants to try and prevent and make sure this, this doesn't happen again for as long as possible. So it's an interesting question, is, you know, what, what could have happened here? Um, there are some interesting details about the 33,000 miles on this engine. Now the first is, um, when Spencer got everything back together, um, he did have an issue initially with um, a couple of, of leaks with the IEG um, AOS plumbing. Uh, he had to work on that. He's kind of had a, a more ongoing issue uh, with the routing of the, the drain hose for the IEG AOS. We've talked about that with, like, say, the 3MI AOS uh, drain hose that might have helped. Um, but the other thing is he had a... Um, a couple small vacuum leaks and then a, a, an issue where the oil return hose was leaking. So that's kind of like the, the things that he addressed you know, early on in putting the engine back in. The other interesting detail is that as he drove the car, he always had a little bit of oil consumption. And now that the engine's out of the car and we've kind of started to take the first few things off, there's definitely signs of oil in the intercooler um, and, and coming out of the AOS. There was, there's a little bit of oil at the throttle body. So there's definitely oil still making its way through the PCV system, through the AOS, and, and getting burned um, through the engine. Um, Spencer's going to the school here at the University of Colorado in Boulder, but he's from Washington State. And so he's taken this car on multiple road trips back and forth from Washington. And one of the interesting things that he mentioned is he noticed that when he's on these long road trips, that that's where he would see oil consumption go up. You know, he said, you know, on a trip back and forth, wouldn't be unusual for him to use maybe a quart, two quarts of oil in that trip, which is also kind of interesting, um, you know, especially again with the AOS installed, you know, because you'd figure that that would prevent uh, that from happening. So that's where we want to dive into this, take it apart, see what we can find. You know, the, the biggest uh, thing here is, you know, Spencer is putting this engine back together, and once again, he's in that, that uh, situation where he wants to, to do whatever he can to prevent this from happening again, to get as many miles out of the engine as possible. So that's where we want to try and dig into this, see what we can find, and hopefully find a, a reason, a cause for this failure, and, and uh, you know, see what we can do to, to get them back up and running again and, and reliable as possible. So, um, all right, well, let's turn to this engine and see what we can find. Ta-da! Oh, 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 Your, your gasket just... Ooh. There Prompt we go. Go. came off. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There's like a lot of oil. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, no. Oh, it's, it's clean for sure, bro. Oh, it's... Oh, yeah. Can of tuna. That's quite the can of tuna. <clears throat> Smells great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's... I've never seen the video. 
Dude, this is in, this is so much shit like metal. Where'd you go, bro? I don't know, man. Oh. Dip my chicken in there. It looks saucy. Yeah, dude. Here, I got something for you. In the light, at the right angle. It was like a. <clears throat> I'm in the piston. <laughs> wow, this one's early. closer to top dead center. It has the same thing with Can you like pull back a, little bit? a lot of the carbon you flaking off. Ooh, same flaking at all. Yeah. Same with this one, not really flaking. Oh, yeah. Wait, way. what am I looking at? That's the top of the piston. He's like it's right on top, to top of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's wet though. Yeah, it is wet. Oh, damn. That one is wet. Oh. <laughs> like, come on. Okay. All right. Dun, 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 dun. The moment of truth. Mmm, combustion chamber smell. That's what I like. It smells like a lot of fuel. Oh, yeah. All in all, not what you would expect to see coming out of a rod knocking car. Okay, so that one sounded a little. But what I see is your crank has walked. Oh shit. Yeah, look at this. Holy shit. Look at yeah, the, the DSM, line. bro. Oh. Your crank walked forward. How is that possible? Thrust bearings are. Yeah. Oh, this compression that stroke. metal noise, though. Like mid compression yeah. stroke. Oh. 